Let's take a look at installing Aviva InTouch HMI. My source media is installed and linked to disk D, and I have here the setup.exe program. I'm going to run it as administrator. If prompted, it'll indicate that you can go to this GCS resource website to confirm in the technology matrix if the version of the operating system that you've installed is compatible. Mine is, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. There are two choices for installation. You can check individual boxes for products, or you can perform the install by role. My focus here will be on product-based selection, and I'll click Next. A list of the products appears. In the list, we have Aviva InTouch HMI. I'm going to go ahead and check that box. If I want to do remote access to Aviva and have terminal server installed for Microsoft, I can use the Aviva InTouch Access Anywhere. If I do not yet have Historian installed and plan to use that with InTouch, then I can also enable InTouch Historian. And if I separately have licensed the Aviva Historian client pack, I can install that as well. I do want to use the Modbus Modicon IO with InTouch for my example. So I'm going to check this box for Aviva Communication Drivers Pack. And finally, I must have an Enterprise License Platform installed to be able to license the product. And then click Next. This warning lets customers know that there are dependencies no longer included for cybersecurity reasons. They may have had third-party script libraries or applications they were using relying on this installation to take care of it for them and we remove them, so you must acknowledge that these no longer exist and would require a separate installation from you if you still needed them, and click Next. This is finally a list of all of the applications being installed. I am gonna check this customization box though, so I can specifically choose which IO driver that I want installed as well, and click Next. And then in this list, I'm able to go to the bottom and find the specific IO driver that I want installed, which in this case is Modicon MBTCP, and click Next. Then choose which of the five available languages you want InTouch installed in. I'm using English. Next, read and acknowledge the license agreement and click Agree. You must then enter a system account, which must have the permissions or ability to create folders and files on disk. This account must be a permanent account as it will be reused if changes are ever made in the future to the installation or modifications made to the installed products. This account is also used for connectivity by other Aviva applications. In my case, I already have an administrative account that I want to use that is part of my domain. So I will enter that information here now. and click Next. This particular account is not permanent, but I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge as though it is. This confirms that we wanna use the SQL Express edition that is installed with the product rather than installing and setting up our own. And I'll click Next. A final confirmation dialog box lists everything that's being installed. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Install to continue. The installation breaks off and installs SQL, and then the installer resumes the Aviva installation. At the end of the install, you're prompted to do initial configuration of the software install. I will click Configure. Configurator is typically configured top to bottom, going group to group, node to node, until all the items that you require are configured. To see a legend for how the icons are used, you can click on any group node, and the legend here at the bottom will show you what all of the icons mean. Let's begin then under the common platform group, and I'll select this license mode. Depending on how you licensed your software, you'll select perpetual for a traditional non-expiring license, flex for a subscription-based license that uses flex credits, and operations control if you've acquired the license as part of an operations control subscription. The connected experience option requires that you have a Connect account and that you've enabled SSO or single sign-on across the products in this node and any related Connect Cloud services. I'm going to use the Flex license, so I'm just going to click Configure and Yes to confirm that a reboot will be required at the end. 
Next, we have the system management server. You can only have one system management server per system. The system management server's role is to manage encryption with communication between nodes and also to deal with single sign-on features. As I only have this one primary node in the network, I'm going to select that this machine is the system management server and click configure. A certificate is automatically assigned to me and that value is displayed here. Next, we have the federated identity provider. If you're using an external authentication, you can choose that from here, Azure Active Directory or Aviva Connect. I'm not using one, so I'm gonna choose none and click configure. Next, we have the group for Aviva Enterprise Licensing. This first node is a warning that your license server is not yet secured. You click configure to secure it. And it reports back that the license server is configured in secured mode. Next up, we have select license server. Typically one node in the network will serve as the license server. If you can make a successful connection to it, the test connection will indicate that it has succeeded, which you can see in this message down here at the bottom of the configuration messages. And when ready, click configure. The next group, industrial graphics server, is in touch specific. Though it's already configured, I will make a mention here that client settings relates to the web client tool. It is basically the rate at which animations are refreshed and alarm information is updated, and these can be adjusted here in milliseconds. And then we have the authentication settings. This is again used by web client to establish user authentication. It is using Windows authentication. This next group, Aviva System Platform, are required components, even though System Platform was not selected during this installation. So ideally, you select each one of them and click Configure to complete these mandatory required pieces. So the Application Server, GRPC, and the Identity Manager Registration. Next up, we have the Aviva Historian Group. The server configuration, most applicably to InTouch HMI, deals with this high-speed history blocks usage for things like the alarm client events and alarm storage. We'll configure that. And similarly, we will accept defaults on the security node for configuring historian, on the search index for historian, and finally, for reporting purposes. For this next group, Aviva System Monitor, I did not install System Monitor, so I will just disable this local agent and click Configure. And finally, this last group, Aviva Intouch HMI, has a configuration item for the Identity Manager registration. And I'll go ahead and click Configure to make sure that that's available for use. Once all the nodes in the tree have been marked as completed, you can click Close. And if this is the configurator at the end of the installation, you're prompted to restart now so you can begin using the software. If you were starting the configurator from the Start menu to make changes, then you would not receive this prompt.